Good afternoon and welcome to Midday News. I'm Milton Walker. A special welcome if you are watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Education Minister Ruel Reed has been sacked. A statement from the Office of the Prime Minister this morning said Mr. Reed has resigned from the Cabinet and the Senate. It said the Prime Minister Andrew Holness met with Mr. Reed regarding certain allegations in the public domain. Mr. Holness says in keeping with the principles of good governance, he requested and received Mr. Reed's resignation. He says Mr. Reed's resignation will ensure that any investigation into matters of concern will not be in any way impeded by his presence or oversight of the ministry. All functions of the ministry have been transferred to the office of the Prime Minister, which is to start its own review. TVJ News had received information that all was not well at the government ministry following allegations of improper actions regarding the employment of persons at agencies falling under that ministry. Mr. Reid has been on secondment from Jamaica College, where he was the principal. TVJ News saw a comment from the board chairman of Jamaica College, Michael Bernard. However, we were told that he was in a board meeting. Meanwhile, TVJ News has been informed that the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Division and the Financial Investigation Division are investigating allegations of impropriety at the Ministry of Education. On Monday, Opposition Leader Dr. Peter Phillips called for the Auditor General to immediately investigate allegations of breaches and the misuse of public funds involving the Ministry of Education and the Caribbean Maritime University, which falls under the ministry. And the parliamentary opposition, the PMP, just moments ago hosted a media briefing on the resignation of the education minister, Ruel Reed. Our reporter, Herman Green, was there and joins us now on the telephone. Herman, what can you tell us about the meeting? Hello? Herman, good afternoon. You're at the opposition leader's press briefing. What can you tell us uh, what came out of that um, media briefing? Herman? Herman, can you hear me? Herman, can you hear me? All right. Meanwhile, the opposition, we'll get back to Herman Green shortly. Meanwhile, the opposition spokesperson on education, Ronald Thwaites, expressed disappointment with the events leading to the sacking of the minister. You can only set back uh, the cause of education, and it points to the need for avoiding political appointments to surround a minister and it is emphasizes again the need for juncture and collaboration between political forces and as to the institutions which have been named future of the Caribbean Maritime University and other institutions whose names have been mentioned in connection with the present debacle are cleared so that our young people can continue to benefit from the opportunities they offer. Edu education Ministry of Spokesman on Education, Ronald Thwaites. The debate about the review of the labor laws is intensifying. The opposition leader raised the issue of benefits for contract workers, among other issues, in his budget presentation recently. We have more in this report. In this press briefing, opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips called for the government to address labor law issues. The main issue, the high number of contract workers being employed without benefits. This phenomenon of the spread of contract work into mainstream employment, in fact, does rob the workers of benefits that have been won by the trade union movement over the years. According to General Secretary of the Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees, John Levy, the issue is so grave that it may be considered a national crisis. Speaking on RGRs Beyond the Headlines last evening, Mr. Levy gave examples. Two people working in an entity, doing the same job. One is permanent, or what we call opening the contract, and the other one is on a fixed-term contract. But one gets more pay than the other. So the, the whole principle of equal pay for equal work is thrown through the window. 
if you have benefits. The two people doing the same job again, one of them gets a meal allowance because they're an open-ended contract employee, and the other employee doesn't get a meal allowance, and they're doing the same job, part of the same team. Mr. Levis says it also extends to pension benefits and redundancies. It's why he has endorsed the call for legislative changes. However, also speaking on Beyond the Headlines, President of the Jamaica Employers Federation, David Wan, said he does not support that call. There ought to be an incentive for people to use more as people on staff, for example, because I think that negative incentive of legislation is only going to make it worse because some people will then reduce their workforce, etc., etc. Because, you know, legislation don't think is the answer. Just like you have employment tax credit right now, and you're, you're incentivized financially to have people on your payroll, some other mechanism can be found to incentivize people to use more full-time staff. But this, there needs to be a legislative guarantee that prevents the exploitation of the Jamaican worker in this way. Herman Green, TVJ News. The political ombudsman has ordered the government to stop roadworks and other projects now on the way in eastern Portland. But Member of Parliament for the neighboring Portland Western, Daryl Vaz, says that won't stop the JLP from winning the seat. We have more in this report. It's after 30 years of loyalty, 30 years of full support. What do you have to show for it? That question from Member of Parliament for Portland Western, Darrell Vaz, at a JLP campaign meeting last evening. His wife, the candidate for the Portland Eastern seat, Anne Marie Vaz, was absent, and so Mr. Vaz took the lead to convince constituents to elect her. He also responded to concerns about roadworks and other projects being done in the area ahead of the April 4 by election. We're not doing nothing illegal. We're not doing nothing in contravention of any law because this is a community effort. And the only thing that is happening is that action and is helping the community to do and finish this field that has been going on for years and years and years. Mr. Vaz argued that the JLP is not the only entity doing work as part of campaign activities. I see a water truck. And everybody I get water. And when I investigate and inquire, I know parish council, I know NWC, I politics, I deliver the water, and I know me. But guess what? Labour Party no bad mind. So guess what? Me now go report it, and me now go ball. The political ombudsman ordered the JLP to stop roadworks and other projects which could influence the outcome of the by-election. But Mr. Vaz believes doing so won't prevent the JLP from winning. So let me tell you something. Can you know me not put my mouth around and talk? Andrew Honis and Anne-Marie Vaz and the Jamaica Labour Party in East Portland is unstoppable. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. And we return to the story about the parliamentary opposition's media briefing, which concluded just moments ago. They held a briefing on the resignation, or sacking rather, of Education Minister Ruel Reed, or reporter Herman Green, uh, joins us now. Herman, uh, what can you tell us um, that came out of this brief press briefing by the opposition leader? Yes, Milton, thank you. Well, first of all, the opposition is again blasting the Andrew Honus led administration about what it says is corruption in this government uh, as it relates to, well, they pointed that this is the second minister being sacked in this manner. As it relates to the Ministry of Education issue, they said what they have heard is just the tip of the iceberg. Not only the central ministry of education is involved, but other agencies, including the Caribbean Maritime University, the National Education Trust, and the Heart Trust, which was subsequently transferred to the office of the Prime Minister, have all been implicated in this web of corruption. 
This is the second senior minister of government that has been forced to resign in less than a year under the shadow of corruption affecting agencies for which they have been responsible. Now, they have, he also uh, blasted the idea of putting MOE under the OPM again. But what he's calling for mostly is for the Auditor General and the security forces to leave no stone unturned in their investigations. I am again calling upon the Auditor General and the National Integrity Commission, as well as the security agencies, including the Jamaica Constabulary Force, MOCA, the major organized crime agency, the Financial Investigation Division, to fully investigate the allegations which have caused the minister's resignation. So we'll continue to track this and we'll try and get some more info from the opposition as it relates to this for primetime news. Milton, it's back to you. Okay, Herman, thank you. And of course, Herman Green will have much more in primetime news later. Also, the opposition spokesman and National Security Fitz Jackson has commended the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the JCF, for its efforts in tracking down the perpetrators of a recent brazen attack and robbery in St. James. He noted that due to the efforts of the police, three suspects were held. At least five illegal firearms were also seized and $1.6 million in cash recovered. Mr. Jackson noted that the swift action of the lawmen sends a clear message to criminals. Figures from the Tourism Ministry have revealed that the tourist arrivals into Kingston a day before the Bujabantan concert more than doubled when compared to the same day last year. The Ministry has said the concert held at the National Stadium on Saturday was a huge economic boom for the corporate area and Jamaica. Senior strategist in the Ministry of Tourism, Delana Sievright, says this included increased tourist traffic through the two international airports. Well, on Friday... Uh, we saw at least 2,400 plus arrivals coming into Kingston only through the Norman Madden International Airport, and that is a 143% increase over the same day last year coming through the Norman Madden International Airport. So last year we had 1,000 foreign visitors coming through Norman Madden International Airport in Kingston uh, on Friday. And uh, for this year, it was 2,400 plus foreign visitors. Mr. Steve Wright says data from the Jamaica Tourist Board also show that 7,389 foreigners arrived in Montego Bay on, on Friday. Bay, we also registered over 50% increase in arrivals on the Friday, the day before the concert. Similar numbers for Montego Bay, but of course higher. And also for the entire weekend, we registered an over 50% increase in arrivals for overall numbers coming into Kingston. The ministry says the second annual Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival and the inaugural Jamaica Rum Festival, which were held this month, also brought many visitors from overseas. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the Health Report, we look at the common cold. We advise a lot of fruits and vegetables. And honey, honey is one aspect. Honey has been shown in some way along with lemon juice to help in, this, in terms of recovery. But honey must never be used in children below one year. That's the Health Report this evening in Primetime News. And now for today's healthy living tip. Wash your hands thoroughly and often with soap and water. Clean kitchen and bathroom countertops with disinfectant, especially when someone in your family has a cold. Wash children's toys periodically. Sneeze and cough into tissues. Discard used tissues right away, then wash your hands carefully. And don't share drinking glasses or utensils with other family members. In sports, the regular season of the Red Stripe Premier League will come to an end today with the biggest piece of business to be completed being that of who will join Reno, Reno as the next relegated team. Ronaldo Brown reports. It now seems that only mathematics and a defeat for Dumbo Holden can save former champions Montego Bay United from bidding goodbye to the big league. The allegation of Cavalier using an ineligible player against Montego Bay United on January 9 
was not discussed at Tuesday's PFAJ meeting, which means any points that Montego Bay United could have picked up in the boardroom are now out the window. It now means that Montego Bay United must beat Waterhouse and hope Homer United get the better of Dumbo Holden. Sounds simple, but it's not. One or both games would have to produce a goal feast in favor of Montego Bay United, who have a negative 23 goal difference compared to Dumbo Holden's negative 7 and a 3-point advantage. Dumbo Holden will visit the Prison Oval where they will meet neighbors Portmore United. Montego Bay United will play away to Waterhouse, who must avoid defeat to remain second, thus securing an automatic semifinal spot. Should Waterhouse lose, this will open the door to Mount Pleasant Football Academy, who are two points behind and will play away to fifth place UWI. There's also the likelihood that Mount Pleasant could play UWI again on Sunday in the quarterfinal. Elsewhere, Arnett Gardens could sneak into fifth place with victory over Harborview, where they could set up a playoff date with fourth-placed Cavalier. Cavalier, in the meantime, will be at home to Tivoli Gardens, who have already made seventh spot their home. Relegated Reno will get the chance to bid the fans goodbye as they close out their season at home to Humble Lion. Renarda Brown for TVJ Sports. And that's the midday news. I'm Milton Walker. Join us at 7 for primetime news where we'll have much more on the resignation of today of Education Minister Ruel Reed. What will happen to him, for example, as caretaker in Northwest St. Anne and some of the other issues which flow, obviously, from this story. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.